Hello, my name is Curtis Dickinson, Senior Applications Engineer at Olympus, recording from my home in Houston, Texas. And in this video, we'll be providing an overview of the user interface and software on the OmniScan X3. Our MXU software for the OmniScan has evolved a lot over the years from the original MXU that we developed for the OmniScan MX to the software for the MX2, the SX, and now the OmniScan X3. We've had a lot of things that have stayed the same. We've had a lot of new, exciting changes come to the software. So it's always good to get a refresher and an update on the direction that we're taking with this new platform. In order to go through this with you, what I'll be doing is navigating through the OmniScan with a mouse. Uh, that way you can see where I'm clicking and where I am hitting different parts of the screen. At different points, I'll also use the touch screen directly on the X3 so that you can see some of the physical touch functions that we've embedded in there. But to get things started, what we'll do is just highlight some of the newer changes that we've made to this platform. And right off the bat, you can see some of that in the overall layout of the software. In order to take advantage of the larger widescreen format display that we've put onto the instrument, we've had to move a few things around to accommodate a larger viewing area for our data. So one of the first things that you'll notice is that we've made some changes to the toolbar that runs across the top of the software and mainly in the readings being moved from the top of that display over to the right hand side. So a little bit of a change in looking at your readings and your measurements uh, for your data. Uh, to the left of those readings, we have the viewing area for your data. Uh, we're looking at a multi-group data file here with phase array channels and a channel of Toft running simultaneously. And then across the top of the software, we have our typical toolbar that we've become accustomed to seeing on the OmniScan platform. Now, in terms of things that have largely stayed the same, one of those is our menu structure, which you'll find by coming to the top left corner of the software. If I click on this menu icon, I will we'll see our menu tree that we've largely stuck with throughout the life of the OmniScan from the MX1 all the way up here to the OmniScan X3. Uh, if we open one of these menus, what we'll find is that a menu at the bottom will open up to view the various sub-menus that are in this case, the UT settings menu. So right now I'm looking at the general submenu, and there's a couple different things that I can do with this pop-up. Uh, one, obviously it gives me access to all of the various parameters at the bottom, but then I, on the right hand side, I can also scroll through all of the submenus that are underneath the UT settings menu. So I can access the general menu, and click through here to the pulser, the receiver, the advanced, the beam menu, all of the submenus I can access from the scroll buttons that are here at this part of the menu. Uh, a lot of OmniScan users are accustomed to having these uh, parameters and submenus across the side of the display and alongside the bottom. And with this pin icon here, uh, we can toggle those menus to the left-hand side of the display. So if your preference is to have those there, you can place them on the left-hand side with that pin. And if I want to maintain a, a large viewing area for this data, I can click this X icon here and remove those menus from the screen. So that's just a quick way that you can access all of the menus uh, that you would typically find on the OmniScan, including the new plan and calibrate menus that we've included uh, as part of the new software. So we'll have other videos that'll show examples of going through various setups so you'll get an idea on how these work in uh, a later video. Now, if we move on from the main menu of the instrument to some of the other portions of the software, the first that we'll focus on is the toolbar that goes across the top. 
So these are a lot of your quick access functions. As you see here, we have access to the gain where I can click and change the gain for whatever group I'm currently looking at, which is indicated both by the green dot on these displays. So I can see the A scan for the active group here. If I look at the displays here, I see another green dot there indicating that the A scan is coming from the top display. So if I change the gain right now, it'll adjust it for the top channel. It also shows me which group I am currently looking at with this button across the toolbar as well. So I have a couple different ways that I can identify where this A scan is coming from. Moving along the top, I also have access to my angle. So if I were to select one of my phased array channels and switch to that group, then I can grab the angle from that display and adjust its position during analysis or during setup if I'm working on a, a new file or a new calibration. Uh, while paused, while looking at a data file, moving on, we can see that we have a shortcut for adding indications into the table. And then in the middle, we have our drop down box for navigating through all of your files and your file management. So with this drop down, we can see how to open a file, start a new file from scratch, um, preset the file name for your data files that you're taking. Uh, the file manager for pulling files on and pulling files off of the instrument, and then some of our reporting functions. So all of your file management is done through that main drop-down box right there. Uh, the next icon over is for switching from group to group. So I can see here all five of the groups that I have active on this data file. And then if I wanted to change the layout of the display, then the next button over controls that process as well. So I can switch to a, a different format for the display that I find more useful, say for data collection, or in this case for data analysis. The last button on the toolbar is going to be your view button, which is used to mainly control what you see on and off the, these displays. Uh, this is where we would make our change from looking at all of the groups that we have access at one time, which is the multiple, or switching that to our single display. So if I find it more useful to look at each group one by one, I can switch that to a single. And then as you can see here, this also has your quick selectors for most of your other display functions. So turning on and off the leg indicators, turning on and off the weld profile for the display, even going as far as deselecting your gates or perhaps turning the readings off to get a much broader view of your data. So this view button works mainly off of the various overlayer display functions that you'll find. So we'll turn some of this back on and move forward into some of your touch specific functions, some of your data or display navigation tools. The X3 obviously has a touch screen display. So there are a lot of functions that work off of me physically touching the display or touching the screen. Uh, a lot of prior OmniScan users are accustomed to having some shortcuts that flow from holding your finger onto the display and then triggering a shortcut menu to pop up from there. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice about this on the X3 is that we get a little bit of feedback from touching the display. If I physically take my finger and touch the display and hold my finger down, you'll notice a small red circle will propagate on the location that I'm touching. And what that does for me as a user is give me feedback on the touchscreen display. So if I touch the screen and the circle does not complete, then the shortcut menu does not open. So it lets me know that A, the touchscreen is working, and it also gives me a target for, say, moving the cursors. Yeah, you'll notice that you get different menu options 
when you hold your finger down in certain locations. And one of those is to set your data cursors. So if I select that, it will place the data cursor in our C-scan display here directly in the center of that target. So not only do I get that feedback loop letting me know that the touchscreen is functioning correctly, but it also gives me a little bit of an accuracy buff in knowing that's exactly where the cursor is going to go if I choose to place them there. Now the touchscreen itself also functions for various other items such as just simply clicking or touching on say a cursor or a gate and then being able to turn the wheel and move the location of that cursor or that gate or say the angle. But one of the other key functions that we have on the touchscreen display is also a zoom function, which we have changed quite a bit uh, from the way we've typically handled using the zoom on our OmniScan instruments. So what I'll do in this case is we'll identify an indication that we want to look at. I'm going to move the angle to that indication. So we see that in the A scan there. And on the right hand side of the instrument is a key that looks like a magnifying glass. If I press that, it puts me into a zoom mode. And there's two ways that I can use this zoom, new zoom function on the X3. One is to touch the position that I'd like to zoom. So I'll touch right on top of that signal that I see in the S scan. And the first way to zoom in is just to use the wheel. If I scroll the wheel, it will zoom in right to that position that I touched. And if I didn't quite get it right, I can touch a different part of the display and re-scroll with the wheel and it will always zoom in on the center point of that target. So if I didn't quite zoom in the way I wanted to, I can quickly touch another spot and then zoom right in. You'll notice that there is a zoom out button here, so I can quickly zoom out from there and go back to where I was. An alternative way to use this button is to ignore the wheel and use what we call a two, to a two point zoom. So if I press the zoom key again, puts me into a zoom mode and I can quickly tap on two corners of the box that I want to zoom in on. So I'll press on one corner here and then press on the opposite corner and the instrument will quickly zoom into that point. So it works very well, works very quickly. Press the zoom button, touch one corner, touch the opposite corner, and I can zoom into any window using that technique. So I could zoom in on the A scan display, the S scan display, or the C scan display separately if I choose to. And then by pressing the zoom key twice, I can quickly zoom out from there as well. So as you can see, we've done a lot with the just overall layout and overall user interface of the software, uh, both from a menu structure standpoint, from the toolbars and some of the quick access functions that you see, and just utilizing some of the screen itself. If you have any questions on what you saw here, pre please put them in the comments below and we'll address those to you right away. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next video.